Hi there. For today's video, we're going to um, synthesize some zinc oxide nanoparticles. Um, to do this, we'll need two small glass beakers, uh, some zinc sulfate, 0 0.7 grams, some urea, 0 0.2 grams, and some sodium hydroxide or caustic soda at 0 0.5. 5 grams. Okay, so and oh, I forgot, and you'll need a microwave oven and some pH papers because we'll have to adjust the um, zinc sulfate and the urea mix with sodium hydroxide to get a pH of 12. Okay, so what we need to do, the method, is dissolve 0 0.7 grams of zinc sulfate and 0 0.2 grams of urea in 100 mils of distilled water. So um, what I have here is 100 mils of distilled water. First, we've got to weigh in our substances. Move that out of the way. Okay, clear that. Alright, we're at zero on the scale. So here we have our caustic soda, which is 0 0.5 grams. We have 20 mils of water in this little glass bowl. So we'll um, get this going. This is, um, don't forget to wear your safety glasses and your gloves. This is exothermic, but in this little concentration of 0.5 grams, we shouldn't develop too much heat, as you can see. There's not a real lot of it. So we'll get that dissolving. Get it all in there. I'm just using the Plumber Supply Caustic Soda for that. A little piece of it. Okay, we'll set that aside and give it a stir and let it dissolve. I can't feel any heat out of this substance, this quantity. Only when you mix it in higher doses, it starts to get really hot. So we'll put that to one side and let it dissolve. I'll just wash that. Okay, uh, so now we have We need 0 0.7 grams of zinc sulfate, which is there, and 0 0.2 grams of urea garden fertilizer. It's a little bit higher. I can move it around. But they're in big clumpy balls, so we'll settle for that amount. That's going to be the oxygen donor, and the um, also reacts and adds back to the um, reaction. So get rid of the scales. I'll post the article in the video description as well so you can read it up. Okay, so we've got our zinc sulfate, 100 mils of distilled water. Gotta be quick or the zinc sulfate turns hard if you don't start stirring it. It should pretty much dissolve fairly quickly, I hope. This is like a bad batch of zinc sulfate sort of doesn't like water. Ah, oh, there we go, we're starting to dissolve. Somewhat. So we'll totally dissolve that. When you start getting up to the one mole solution, it's uh, really hard to dissolve. Okay, that's totally dissolved. The liquid should be clear. And now the urea, 0.2 grams of urea. That might take a little bit. I should have probably crushed it up. So I'll, um, I'll give it a stir and I'll get back when that's totally dissolved and the caustic soda is also dissolved. So it won't, shouldn't be too long. 
Okay, I have uh, both substances dissolved in the liquid. In this bowl we have 100 ml of distilled water, 0 0.7 grams of zinc sulfate and 0 0.2 grams of urea. And in this container we have 0.5 grams of sodium hydroxide or caustic soda and we'll have to adjust the pH of this until it reaches 12 apparently. So we'll start by adding one drop and stirring. It says three to five drops should be required. Okay, so we don't look that good. That's two, three, four drops in there. We might need more. We're not on the scale yet, we're pretty alkaline. So we'll keep increasing. Maybe need a new swab. If it actually does, did call for caustic soda. We'll add heaps. Mm, I think we're at four. No, we're at six. I thought caustic soda was an alkaline as well, but that's what the document says. It doesn't look like it's going up. Maybe that's why he's mixed 20 mils of the caustic soda, perhaps. I still don't see much of a change in the papers. Uh, we might be coming up close to seven. Alright, so we'll keep adding, it's getting darker. It's starting to get opaque. Might have to get some more paper. Let's add some more. So we're about a six now. All right, I'll um, continue adding stuff and I'll get back. Okay, I'm back. It's almost took all of the liquid and we're at uh, Oops, made it go purple. I'll just tear off another piece. <clears throat> 
So, yep, the um, document is correct. It does eventually go up in pH. Oh, these little fiddly things. I can't even grab a piece. Looks like it grabs 10. Okay. Okay, what are we looking at? Right, I'm pretty sure we're pretty close to 12. Anyway, we'll just stick the remainder in there because there wasn't too much left. All right, so that took one, two, three, four, five, six, six papers. All right, once you've got your solution prepared like this, we um, need to go put it in the microwave oven for five minutes on half power, apparently. So I'll um, meet outside, I'll take my solution and we'll go see how that works. Okay, I'm outside, we have our solution at the microwave on medium. Close the door and five minutes. Uh, there's no light so we can't see what's going on. So I'll be back in five minutes. Okay, we're almost at five minutes. Probably long enough. Check it. Don't breathe in this stuff. Check the temperature. We're at 88, 90 degrees. We have some suspended particles. I'll um, let it get cool and uh, we'll check it out in the sun. It should have a bluish tinge to it. Okay, that's cooled off to a point where I can handle it. It sort of um, does have a, like a little bluish tinge to it. So we might be successful. And um, don't breathe the fumes because it gives off the ammonia. You know, the ammonia goes back into the solution and causes, creates hydroxide groups, I think, something like that. And adds to the reaction. And then it just keeps going until it's completely consumed. So what I'll do is I'll add more distilled water, let it settle, siphon it off, add some more distilled water, siphon that off and let it dry out and eventually put it into a cell as um, zinc oxide works quite well. And these should be zinc oxide nanoparticles. I'm pretty sure it does sort of have a slightly little bluish tinge to it. As for all of that being zinc oxide, I'm not sure. And we'll give it a stir. And that's a uh, Pyrex dish as well, so it's microwave safe. So again, don't breathe it in, do it outside and in an old microwave oven. Alright, thanks for watching.